CPAC head conservative kind of big wig match slap. Uh, there was an accusation that he had essentially sexually assaulted a staffer from Herschel Walker's campaign in Georgia. And um, the the original recording came out where the staffer two hours after the incident happened, documented it. Um, was that to, to the, the campaign's lawyers or something like that? Or did he just record that on his own? Do you guys remember? It was it was it was released in the reporting that came from the Daily Beast. So I'm not sure if he sent it directly to the Daily Beast or. But the, either way, he made a recording somehow, yeah. to document what had happened to him, and now there is some more corroborating evidence about this incident where um, uh, CNN got uh, obtained these text messages uh, between the the staffer and Schlapp, as well as the staffer texting his friend and describing uh the incident to him and, and just for more context like they were apparently out drinking matt schlapp was quite aggressive uh and was groping him for a long period of time allegedly against his will senior campaign officials who uh cnn interviewed and who spoke to the staffer in real time describe him as being angry and mortified, and they immediately instructed him not to drive Schlapp again. Yeah, he was supposed to pick him up the next day, take him to the right. airport, is my understanding. You've obtained text messages. What do they, what do they show? So uh, according to the text messages and also phone records we reviewed, after the campaign tells uh, the staffer not to drive uh, Schlapp, the staffer texts Schlapp and says, quote, I did want to say I was uncomfortable with what happened last night. The campaign does have a driver who's available to get you to Macon and back to the airport. According to phone records, Schlapp tried to reach the staffer. Uh, and then after a couple of hours, Schlapp actually texted uh, the staffer. He used his name and he said, quote, if you could see it in your heart to call me at the end of the day, I would appreciate it. If not, I wish you luck on the campaign and hope you keep up the good work. Anderson, we also reviewed other text messages from that night in real time. Uh, these are being made public for the first time. It includes the staffer texted a friend who is in politics and he wanted to tell him what happened. He's clearly very upset and he's looking for guidance uh, about how to tell the campaign what happened. Uh, so the staffer texts the friend, quote, he's pissed I didn't follow him to his hotel room. Then later the friend responds, I'm so sorry, man, what a effing creep. And the staffer later texts again, I just don't know how to say it to my superiors that their surrogate fondled my junk without my consent. And I mean, so like that's what we call corroborating evidence. Um, that's a lot of it. And the staffer, you know, really heads up, like made a point to essentially document this, um, knowing that there are always going to be people who say, I mean, I saw Candace Owens today was saying that Andrew Tate's accusers are making it up, basically. Uh, even, even though there could, yeah, there's they a call ton it the of, Matrix. Right, I mean, like, it doesn't matter how much evidence uh, is provided, there's always going to be, pe be people that try to poke holes in it. Um, pretty, pretty clear you can't poke many holes uh, in this situation, and it, it's like just yet another incident, incident of a right-winger who clearly has repressed feelings um about like a same-sex relationship mm -hmm. using like essentially inflicting their own personal turmoil and trauma uh and the <laughs> the conflict that results from that onto others and just uh overcompensating with frankly extreme and um immoral political views <laughs> We have a tweet from a Matt Schlapp. Uh, Bradley, if you could pull this up. Uh, I mean, he's always been like a, a strange guy. And I remember this tweet when this uh, story came up. Um, uh, this was about, he was responding to something about Eric Adams and saying uh, about cans. I can't remember exactly what the context was. Um, 
Uh, Eric Adams says Kansas doesn't have a brand. I don't know why Adams said that. This um, was this was like early in his mayoralty when he basically was like, you know, there are all these transplants and like the New York is like New York. He was talking about how, how, how far superior New York was to other places. Right. Yeah, I mean, stupid, stupid. I don't like Eric Adams, so like that's not the point of this. But um, uh, <laughs> I had an interesting response to this, which is. We go in the toilets, and we believe God creates boys and girls, and guns are legal, and murders are rare. Your turn, Mr. Mayor. And we go in the toilets? And, yeah. Does he tap his foot? <laughs> we, exactly. Like, that's, that's the thing that I was like, it, everyone was like, what are you talking about? Literally, I think what he meant was... It was a litter box thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, oh. oh uh, so he's like, bragging. Yeah, I, like, I'm very straight. Yeah. I shit in the toilet. Yeah, our, our brand <laughs> I is stand that, when I pee. Our brand is that we go in toilets, as if like all of New York, uh, New Yorkers are just going in litter boxes now, which would be a quite, I mean, an infrastructural problem. It uh, would be. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> very need, messy. Need some more hold on bags for that. <laughs> yeah. So that's match slap. A very yeah, and um, an empowered guy. And you know, here's the thing: is I don't think this. I don't think this is the first time anybody knew uh, that he's this this way. I think that it was probably used uh, by folks who would say um, promote him to positions of authority and say, "Hey, Matt, you're going to do what we want to do, or otherwise, this big secret of yours uh, is going to be public." I mean, it, he was operating certainly as if this is not the, his first go around. Um, by the way, married to a woman uh, who worked on the Trump campaign. Um, yeah, Mercedes. Mercedes Schlapp. Yeah, you do not want to be in that house dark. after dark. Uh, have yeah. five children together. And sorry, I, would, uh, I meant to clarify. So, the, so I think some of that re the, the recordings came to NBC News that, that we're, where we wa we watched. Uh, you know, we we listened to that with Sam and, uh, on I think Monday or Tuesday. But the Daily Beast also reported on this story as well. Gotcha. So it's, it's getting a lot of like you know more extensive corroboration. It was CNN, saying, uh, NBC News, Daily Beast. I think all it's three getting, are corroborating it's getting, you know, this. So a lot of different, yeah. Uh, support and substantiation you know there's definitely a culture of predation not just within the republican party but within our political systems and society in you know mm. i think in general you know but i think we can be honest about the republicans wallowing it wallowing in it at the sort of rhetoric level you know the trump grabbing pussy the various sort of sex scandals or sort of like you know matt gates and his trafficking uh sort of being ignored i think that it's just always surprising for people to you know, come to grips with it happening to them, obviously, even when they are in these situations where they hear people, you know, make excuses for predators all the time that they somehow believe that they're immune from it. So, you know, I think that the GOP has always had a problem with the younger uh, demographics. And as more and more, and I don't know how young this particular staffer is, I assume since he's, you know, a strategist or a staffer, he's not, you know, in the geriatric age range. He was, like most he's GOP. in his 30s and he was yeah. assigned to drive him. Like the actual interpersonal sort of toxicity of the GOP yeah. is also going to drive out a lot of young people and continue to because, yeah, you know, I think a lot of young people, same with people who work at Fox News, oftentimes just think it's a branding thing. And they, these people aren't actually just like personally going to use their power in a way to, you know, marginalize them. It's it's. I think it's I think it's obvious based on the way they talk, but I guess some people find it to be completely, you know, out of nowhere when like the head of like the predator pack starts, you know, what was the old like a uh, tweet? You know, I voted for a lot the face line eating party, but I didn't think it was going to, you know, eat my face. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's uh, I agree with everything that was said. This is definitely not something new with this. Uh, I'm sure many people knew about what uh, it just reminded me of that Veep here. thing, like the, the, yes. the Veep bit with, with Pat and Oswalt and um Jonah. I can't remember who, like, like what the yeah. tall, the really tall guy's name is when like Pat Oswalt won't yeah. stop like gripping his junk. And it's like that's you know, it's politics is a really fucked up world, and it's just like I think a lot of people have been shielded from that before social media allowed people to speak more openly about their jobs across the board, yeah. And also, I just think, you know, same-sex marriage, law of the land by the Supreme Court just was codified uh, in the House and the Senate, but there, this is still a party built on hatred, and there's a lot of self-hatred that happens within it. Um, it's reflecting outwards. Like, that is their politics in many ways.